emphasizing Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 23, which is his body. Here we see in verse 22 of Ephesians chapter 1. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. And so when he worked in Christ, as we're reading and skimming through, but paying attention and not being disrespectful to the scripture as a full letter, it's a full message delivered to us in a certain way. We don't just want to pick out and pick the one verse here or the one line there or the one phrase there or the one character in the original Greek there and build a, an entire theology out of it and then a church and then eventually a group of people that want to get together and make you sign a piece of paper and you're allowed in this church but you're not allowed in our building and this and that blah 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 no friends that has nothing to do with that this is simply opening the door to anyone that wants to hear it and saying he, now here it is, God put all things under his feet, under Christ's feet, and gave him and gave Christ to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. Now here we're talking about the church. Now here we get into it as we're making the transition to the church, or in other words, Ephesians 4 which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And so here we've been hearing about <clears throat> Jesus Christ as the head, the principal here, apostle of Christ, according to the will of God. And then the faithful in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So here we have of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and then we have faithful in Christ. So we see of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And then we see faithful in Christ. And then grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So this God is our Father and we're also receiving grace and peace from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, also, as we read this, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and grace to you and peace from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This isn't about you. It's not about your church or the group of people you run around with or the awards you got. This is about, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And here again, it's moving all over the place. And I'll just be reading and preaching now. I'll pull into the, re I'll get into the references in a minute. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, there's a, there's a lot of going on here with fullness, bringing together all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth, in Him, obtained an inheritance, predestined according to His purpose, trusted, heard, believed, sealed, Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance. This is the the down payment, if you will, the promise that we will have the inheritance, and this is it, until the redemption of the purchased possession, to the, again, to the praise of his glory. In other words, until the Lord returns and, or it's, and, and takes, receives his own church to himself, we'll see this. This is the guarantee of the purchased possession that this whole thing has even taken place is the Holy Spirit. And herein we see faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So I will say this based on the Bible. Look it up. Google it. Google the Bible. Make sure, you, make sure it's the right version. 
And that is, what does the Bible say about that? And who, what are we preaching here? And we're preaching that whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be saved. You will be saved. And you will be sealed with the Holy Spirit. And that is what we're preaching. And if you trust in that and you make a decision that in your direction of whatever life you're going, you're changing the direction of your thinking and you're now thinking in this way and you're now behaving in this way and you're now doing this thing, which is in Christ, of Christ, belonging to Christ, in Christ by the baptism of identification, self-identification in public. Well, then you're going to be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You're saved and you will be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And what that's going to look like or feel like with you, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to look like or feel like anything with you, according to me or you. But I can only tell you that this is what we're preaching. This is the message. This is what Paul said. This is the Bible. We're only preaching what the Bible says. If it applies to you, great. If it doesn't apply to you, for, don't worry about it. But you might want to rethink it at some point, revisit it. It's your choice. And there it is. We'll leave it at that as we go on and continue. But this is very deep here. Put all things under his feet. And this is having to do with the church. And that is, the church is the fullness of him that fills all in all. The church is his body. Christ, Jesus Christ, is, a, is, in, or is up in heaven, so to speak. In heaven, so to speak. But I'm just going to say up in heaven. But it doesn't mean heaven is up or down or any in any certain direction according to a scientific measurement. It just, it's the closest we can come to understanding in these terms. Heaven is up, hell is down. That's it. It's the best I got. But we're preaching this, friends, that whoever calls on the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, will be saved. And then you'll be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. Of the purchased possession until the day the Lord returns, as we said. Okay, now, and then we see his grace, and he put all things under his feet. And he put all things under his feet. And God put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head of all things over all things to the church. Which is his body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. So here now the, the church is the feet. It's the body. It's the hands. It's everything from the neck down, so to speak. Or possibly the Adam's apple down, so to speak. If there, if that might be such a way of saying it. But, friends, if you're of Christ, if you're a Christian, you're a member of this church, and he put all things under his feet. And let's say that one more time. And he put all things under his feet. Ah! That's you and that's me, friends, if we're in Christ. We're the body. We're the feet of Christ. And he put all things under his feet. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, 
even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, with Christ, by grace you have been saved. Again, emphasizing grace. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ. Well, first Christ is in the heavenly places and we are the feet. Remember, he has put all things under his feet. And now... We are the fullness of him that fills all in all. And then now, we were dead in trespasses, made us alive, but God, who's rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. Okay, here we're getting into some more deepness here and possibly more coffee if you got any decaf you better put it on might be here for a while friends we're not even we're not even to Ephesians 3 yet we're, we got to get to Ephesians 4 and raised us up together that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus now what that's going to look like what that means in terms of how I can even come up with a way to imagine that ain't going to happen buddy Ain't going to happen. No, not in a million years. Well, best I got is that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. I don't even know what that means. Okay, but whatever it is, I'm in. Okay, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Again, saved through faith not of you it's not about you it's not about me it's the gift of god according to his pleasure his prudence not of works nothing you did nothing i did nothing you're doing nothing i'm doing lest anyone should boast hey it's not about you it's not about me for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourself selves it is a gift of god Friends, we're preaching here so much, I'm going to have to get some nutrition in my body. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. So, the reason, this is, this is the best we got. The reason why... This is according to God's will and God's wisdom is because in God's prudence and his good pleasure and because of his love is because if it was me that put it together, I don't know about you, but if it was, if I was in charge of this, it would certainly be all about doing things and working and rules and having people sign a piece of papers and, and all this kind of stuff, signing papers to attend certain churches and be allowed in certain buildings, you got to sign certain papers to be allowed in certain churches. Come on, that's not Bible at all. You don't see anywhere that ever happened any any place, except in those places where of which on which the Lord commented as those people that were doing that. You see those people? They are literally keeping people out of the kingdom of heaven. And there you go, I'll leave it at that. Lord have mercy on me, on my soul. And it's not of works because I would make it about rules and you've got to sign papers and my personality and I don't like the way you dress. That's what I would do. But I'm not going to do that. I don't want to live that way. I have to remember that for by grace you have been saved through faith. It's not about you. It's not about me it's about god in christ and, and listen this is unlike any christian show or broadcast this is not entertainment we're not entertaining anybody here we're preaching ephesians 4 but we're taking a while to get there and while we do it we are just we're not in a hurry, but we're allowing, the, we're moving with the spirit, so to speak. 
and we don't want to get too much into conspiracy theories or you know radical holy rollerism but we're allowing the holy spirit to guide the conversation through the as we read the bible so to speak in that manner of speaking okay now getting back to and this is this is deep this is a lot of stuff here but again we're getting to ephesians 4 for we are his workmanship it's not about you it's not about me it's not about the way i wanted it set up it's about the way the creator wanted it set up and that's what happened and that's what we got and thank the good lord and eat it why that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. And here, friends, is one of those... We keep coming back to this because it is often this ask this question of why and I, didn't, I don't deserve it or whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm not good enough, but why? Well, sometimes... The why is simply in the pleasure of the person that gave the gift. And in this case, God is not a person in the sense of it's a, he's, this, this God is a God of a person like you or I, I, I'm a person or you're a person. But King James Version language, he is God. He's God. So, and that's something that I'm not and that you're not. Well, not according to the Bible, at least. For we are his workmanship, verse 10. And we've got to get through this because this is foundational to when we really get into teaching Ephesians 4. But we're taking every chance we can to preach. Because who doesn't love to hear some good preaching? All right, don't answer that. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Again, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. Again, verse 9. Ephesians 2. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship. So it's not about me, it's not about you, it's about him. His workmanship. His workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Again. Made. Created in Christ Jesus. For, again, the first time we saw this was to the praise of his glory at all of this for his own pleasure. And again, to the praise of his glory according to the counsel of his will. And then that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And now, for we are his workmanship created in Christ for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now, here's another great mystery. What came first, the work or the preparing of the plan that we walk in that work? Well, here we see, again, he predestined us. He predestined us. But yet, according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. But then there is this, that we who first trusted in Christ should be the praise of his glory, and they that believed, and so on and so forth. So yes, for we are his workmanship, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For by grace have you been saved through faith. And that, not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for 
good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So, my reading of this, if you will, my take on this is, if you will, if I may use that language, my take on this is that, and again, I'm only using the Bible. I'm not, there's no original Greek, no extra coffee, nothing like that. I'm not even drinking coffee right now. We, we are prepared in that in, according to his will, it was pre destined that we should walk in these good works according to as we will read along what these what these good works are in Ephesians but it is as a designer will design a vehicle or a, <clears throat> a functional tool or house to operate in certain conditions under certain extremes and what and how that's supposed to look and I think here as I will read this it looks that this was designed this was a this is a design by God in Christ for his own pleasure and praise and glory and and as we should praise and give praise and glory to God Paul gives us this example created for specific purposes that we should walk holy and blameless and blameless before him in love and then also that we should not do good not of works lest anyone should boast but created in Christ for good works which God prepared before that we should walk in them. Now I'm not I'm not 100% clear on the way that's written there. Again, King James version, I'm only using this. But from what I get, it's we should be doing good works and not doing stuff that's bad. I think that's the big picture here. The deeper 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 picture is when you start getting into the details of that, this is a great mystery. And Ephesians, the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians is in some ways letting us take a peek inside of that uh, mystery box, if you will, to use a common term of our time. So, Paul goes on to say, we're gonna move on quickly over some of this that in Ephesians 2 strangers no 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 hope conviction now in Christ you were once far off right near by the blood of Christ again emphasizing the blood of Christ we're moving quickly now to Ephesians 4 for he himself is our peace we're still looking over glossing over moving rather quickly through I should say Ephesians 2 uh, 14 Ephesians 2 14 for he himself is our peace who hath made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition got it through Gentiles uh -huh, uncircumcision and circumcision yep there's no difference in Gentile and Jew now having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances so as to create in himself a new man from the two thus making peace and that is the church the body of Christ and that is what we said earlier when we said the church is, the Christian is, the Christians are the church. You could say the Christians is the church. And this is a mystery. But it's been known now, it's been revealed, and it's all according to the plan of God, the will of God, according to his good pleasure and prudence. It's not about you, it's not about me. May all, and may the, all praise and, bl and blessings go unto God the God and Father, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And here from this, this, this at one time separated 
peoples comes a new man, a new person, so to speak, a new reality. Comes one new man from the two, thus making peace that he might reconcile them both to God in one body, and that is in his own body. As we see, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself a new man, again, it's a mystery, taken in his flesh, we see. Now, in his flesh, we're reading this. Putting... That, that is to say, abolished in his flesh. And then, that in he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity, abolishing in his flesh. And then, putting to death the enmity, that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross. And so, and then again we'll see verse 17, Ephesians 2, 17. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. And through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. And here now, verse 18, this is more really deep stuff, but it has to do with the Holy Spirit. And we are in the Holy Spirit, in Christ, baptized by the Holy Spirit, in one spirit, one spirit, what, baptized by one spirit, into one body. We are all one body in Christ. Both been, have been reconciled, whether Jew or not a Jew. And then he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and those that were near. So, he came, returned, after having put this enmity to death, having put to death the enmity, abolished in his own body, that he might reconcile both the Gentiles and the Jew. And again, this is all according to his will, wisdom, prudence, pleasure that he might be praised that unto good works that that we might that we're that we are not of works so we should be boasting but created in Christ for good works that it was prepared beforehand that we should walk in them and this is all a great mystery and, and we're just looking through these uh, these deep truths that we're seeing, pillars of, as we would call them, doctrine. Doctrine is what we're looking at. But yet, if you understand this stuff, man, can you explain it to me? Because I don't, I don't get half of it. We're barely building a foundation here to Ephesians 4. But this has to do with what we are. It, it, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a body. We are a body. And it looks like this. Through him. Now here's another mystery. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. So after having accomplished this, abolished the enmity in his flesh, he came and preached to those that were far off and to those that were near. And Paul says directly, and preached to you who were far off and those that were near. So, evidently, there was some preaching going on to Gentiles and Jews. I don't, know, I don't know where that took place, how all of that happened, but whatever it is, I'm reading it. It says it right there, and that's what I'm seeing. How that looked, I don't understand it, but apparently, that's something that took place. That he came and preached peace to you that were far off and to those that were near. What that means, I don't know. Was it in a geographical sense, or was it as, the, as he was just talking about there with the Gentiles and the Jews? But the point is, that's got nothing to do with going to heaven. What does have to do with going to heaven is this, the following. For through him, 
we both have access by one spirit to the Father. And it's not about, you know, who or how and preach peace to those who are far off and who were near and what was the size of the temples and can I have another cup of coffee? No, it's about what will you do with Jesus Christ, friends? Dear friends, we're preaching the name of Jesus Christ. For through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. And that's what it's all about. But we're trying to get through Ephesians to Ephesians 4 because we're preaching and teaching today actually on this idea of the church and Ephesians 4 and what is that and what does it look like and what is the job of the average church member and so on and so forth as a Christian and in other words this is from the standpoint of somebody that identifies as a Christian not somebody that identifies as something else and we're speaking about only certain kinds of Christians and that would be the Christians that are interested in reading and and having a church designed according to the Bible, the Christian Bible, that is to say, specifically, the New Testament and the Old Testament as we have it in the Bible. And the version we're using is the King James Bible. And if you're interested in that, and we have the New King James Bible here today, and if you're interested in that and that's what you want, you want a church that looks like something based on that, well, then you're going to want to continue listening. And we're now here at Ephesians chapter 2, and we're making our way to Ephesians 4, when we'll actually begin the teaching. But in the meantime, we're teaching and preaching.